in St. Paul, Minnesota, was viciously gunned down inside his shop in broad daylight. Surveillance video shows a 15-year-old girl being repeatedly stomped, punched, and kicked by multiple people. You took one of ours, so we take one of yours. What used to be knives are now guns. What used to be guns are now machine guns. Imagine fleeing your country to escape a civil war and moving to a new one in hopes of a better life for your family, only to end up stuck once again in a cycle of violence and crime. Welcome to Minnesota, a city that is well known for its stunning lakes and thriving economy. A state that offers progress and opportunities to its residents, including 80 to 100,000 Somali Americans. But behind that polished exterior is a war zone where gang conflicts have taken a devastating toll. This isn't something new in the U.S. with its wide history of gang wars. But recently, an ominous threat has been rising from Minnesota. Minnesota is one of the few states with dominant Somali gangs. Did the Somalis move to the wrong state, or are they the ones responsible for turning these thriving cities into a battlefield of outlaws? Where did they originate? What is going on inside these Somali gang wars? What hideous crimes have they committed, and who's to blame for this calamity? White racist? In this video, we'll dive deep into the truths behind Minnesota's lethal Somali gang wars. The story of Somali gangs in Minnesota spans far from the state itself to the war-ravaged country of Somalia. In the early 1990s, Somalia was plunged into chaos because of a brutal civil war that brought about extreme violence and starvation, causing millions to flee their homes. Minnesota, long known for its welcoming spirit since the days of World War II, became a beacon of hope for Somalia refugees. The promise of jobs and opportunities spread quickly, making it seem like the perfect refuge. But the transition to a new country did not leave them without problems. On August 27, 1997, 12-year-old Somali boy Abdul Ali was brutally beaten by four to six white men using baseball bats and golf clubs, causing the boy to lose eight of his teeth. These men were members of a gang calling themselves the All-American Boys, and Ali was not their only victim. They have been responsible for waiting of assaults targeting blacks, including Somalis, showing how these attacks were racially motivated. On October 22nd of the same year, four white men launched a vicious attack on 64-year-old Salad Guled, a Somali refugee, as he peacefully walked with his 16-year-old cousin outside Amoko Station on 12th Street Southeast. What began as a simple stroll quickly turned into a nightmare as Guled was violently beaten, targeted solely for his identity. These are only two of countless cases of violence against Somali Americans. The racial violence combined with poverty, unemployment, lack of educational opportunities, and cultural differences caused the second generation Somali immigrants to band together and create gangs that still exist to this day. Some of the most notorious names include the Hot Boys, the Somali Mafia, St. Paul Pistol Boys, and the Rough, Tough Somalis. The rise of gangs started subtly, with reports stating that in the 90s, most of the Somali gangs in Minnesota had a few dozen members. A decade later in the 2000s, they quickly multiplied and gained over 200 members. Now, these gangs are more organized than ever, with several hundreds members. Unfortunately, what started off as a means of brotherhood, protection, and belonging quickly escalated into a ruthless cycle of violence and retaliation that caused widespread fear and captured the attention of the authorities. Fueled by internal disputes, territorial control, and and competition for illicit resources, these gangs that were supposed to protect their own descended into a savage war against their fellow Somalis. I would describe it more as not a fight, not a battle, it's, it's a war. The war is fueled by retaliation, this for that, back and forth messages that play out on social media, then the street. There's no victory, there's no ending point, it's you took one of ours, so we take one of yours. I, there's no end. One of the most heated rivalries is between the Somali outlaws and their arch enemies, the 1627 Boys. The Somali outlaws originated in the Minneapolis-St. Paul metropolitan area and have claimed the area around the Carmel Mall in South Minneapolis as their principal territory. Meanwhile, the 1627 Boys' roots can be traced to a high-rise apartment building in Cedar Riverside. The bitter conflict between these two gangs led to a cycle of violence 
violent confrontations and has dramatically impacted their communities. One of the most cataclysmic events that these Somali gang wars caused occurred on the fateful night of March 1st, 2019, and included the wrongful death of a 17-year-old boy named Abduwasa Farah, a bystander fatally shot amid rising gang conflicts. Farah was a basketball player for the Cedar Riverside Warriors. Those who knew him said he was a good student and a talented athlete. He was an amazing human being. He was a humble kid, always smiling, laughing, Mohammed said. I was with him for a 16-hour car ride, and it was the most amazing car ride ever because he was making me laugh half the time, said Farah's coach. On March 1st, 2019, just before midnight, police received a report of shots fired in the 300 block of S. Cedar Avenue. Meanwhile, an ambulance scurried to the scene and transported two victims, a 21-year-old man suffering from a non-critical gunshot wounds, and Farah was pronounced dead, with two bullet holes in the head and seven at the back. The surveillance cameras outside the Red Sea Bar and Restaurant showed the three victims sitting in a parked vehicle just before midnight. The footage showed a Chevrolet pull up behind them and two gunmen nonchalantly walking up and shooting, both killing Farah and paralyzing the other victim. It wasn't until two years later that these murderers were convicted. The jury found 23-year-old Omar Hassan of Minneapolis guilty of premeditated first-degree murder in the minor's death. The other culprit was 23-year-old Abdullahi Ibrahim, also from Minneapolis, who pleaded guilty to second-degree murder. Both of them are known members of the Somali Outlaws Gang. Upon further investigation, the motive for the shooting was only a few hours before the crime. It started at the Carmel Mall at around 9 p.m. when a Somali Outlaws Gang member, who was Omar Hassan's cousin, was shot and rushed to the Hennepin County Medical Center. According to reports and witnesses, four people wearing ski masks inside a vehicle were said to have been the suspects. The victim subsequently told police that he thought he had been targeted by members of the 1627 Boys Street Gang because some people believed he was a member of the Somali Outlaws Gang, but the victim denied being affiliated with them. The hospital's surveillance shows Omar and about 20 other men entering the hospital. A few hours later, after 10.30 p.m., Omar left with another person, ready to deliver revenge and turn Cedar Avenue into blood-stained soil. Their target was Kamal Muhammad, a member of their rival gang, the 1627 Boys, who they believed was responsible for shooting Omar's cousin earlier. The surveillance footage from surrounding businesses shows the brutality that transpired next. Kamal Muhammad was with five other people in the Red Sea restaurant in the Cedar Riverside neighborhood to purchase marijuana, and one of them was Abduwasa Farah. As two people from the car stepped out to take their item, they were approached by another car. Armed suspects emerged from both the front and rear passenger sides of the new vehicle and unleashed a barrage of 27 gunshots into the car, killing 17-year-old Abdiwasa Farah and hitting one of their companions in the spine, paralyzing him for the rest of his life. This bloodshed struck panic and fear, not only in Cedar Avenue, but the entirety of the state. This bloodbath shows how brutal these Somali gang wars can be when they get out of hand. According to police chief Madaria Arredondo, violence among Somali American youth presents a particular challenge for officers who are used to northern gangs. By their actions, their weapons, and their words, violent offenders are displaying an absolute disdain for the law. What used to be knives are now guns. What used to be guns are now machine guns. We have made significant progress against violent crime, there is still more work to be done. The saddest part? The victims weren't even gang members. Farah was not a 1627 gang member, neither was Omar Hassan's cousin, but they suffered a tragic fate in getting caught between the crossfire of this pointless violent conflict. It turns out that these Somali gangs have no first-generation Somali-American members. It's their children, the next generation of youth who are killing each other, wasting the lives their parents fought so hard to protect and preserve. But who's to blame for these young people's lack of guidance? Is it the parents? The local authorities? Is it the lack of a father figure prominent in Somali culture? There is no clear-cut answer. But what's undeniable is everyone suffers, especially the innocent ones. The Somali gang wars of Minnesota are not just a story of crime and violence. They're a slap in the face of how important proper parenting and guidance, education, and a sense of belonging are to every citizen. As this cycle of violence continues, it's clear that Somalis haven't escaped war war yet. The quest for justice, peace, and stability is still as urgent as ever. That's it for today. If you want us to cover a story, comment it down below. For more deep dives and true crime documentaries like these, don't forget to subscribe.